Hey everyone, Nick DiRobertis here teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to be doing an introduction to Monte Carlo simulation. And this is part of our new lecture segment on the same, Monte Carlo simulation. So we've explored in this course already a couple other ways of exploring the parameter space, looking at different inputs and how they affect our model. Uh, we've already looked at sensitivity analysis and scenario analysis and now Monte Carlo simulation comes to uh, round out that set of possibilities. So Monte Carlo simulation uh, is unique in that it allows you to take a deterministic model, which has no notion of randomness or probability, and be able to make conclusions about the chance of certain outcomes occurring in your model. So you're able to take this model with no probability in it at all and add it externally without having to change the core model itself. Um, so that will give you a good understanding of not just what is kind of the expected outcome from the model, but also what's the full range of possible outcomes and what is the chance of each of these outcomes occurring. And certainly in finance, this is an important thing to consider because we're always concerned about the risk return trade-off. And we can think of, in a sense, the uh, baseline output from our model as being kind of the return or you know, whatever objective that we're uh, looking at evaluating in the model. And then the chance of, of getting different um, outcomes, we can think of that as the risk. So um, running the model without Monte Carlo simulation, we're kind of just looking at one side of the risk return trade-off. And so it can be very helpful to bring this in to fully evaluate the problem. So I think it's useful to motivate this by an example. Um, so let's talk about a potential bet that you can place. Uh, so you have an opportunity to place a bet for $1. And if you win that bet, you're going to get $2. But if you lose the bet, then you're going to lose $750,000. And there's no way to avoid this payment through legal means, you're going to have to be obligated to pay that no matter what. And then looking at the odds of this bet, uh, one in a million, you lose that 750,000. And every other time, 999,999 times out of a million, you're going to win the $2. And if you just go and you take the expected value of this bet, then the expected profit is 25 cents. So just looking at kind of the expected outcome, you should definitely take this bet. But uh, you know, any reasonable person looking at this bet would think twice and at least carefully consider, should I really take this bet? Because that downside of losing $750,000 is so severely bad that even though it has such a low probability, you might not want to take the bet because you only have such a small amount to gain in the bet. Uh, so if you make decisions 100% on expected value, you would take the bet. But uh, more than just the expected value matters here. The probabilities of different outcomes occurring and what possible outcomes can occur still matter even beyond expected value. So this is, to some extent, the kind of uh, concepts we're trying to get at with Monte Carlo simulation. You want to see what are the different possible outcomes from the model and consider what that means for your particular situation. <clears throat> and then as far as running Monte Carlo simulation, this is a visualization of how that looks. And you may notice that this is uh, very similar to what we had seen for sensitivity analysis. Uh, in fact, it's the same image here describing Monte Carlo simulation. And that's because the process to run each of them is almost exactly the same. Um, so 
And the same for external scenario analysis, really all three techniques, you follow the same pattern of basically just run the model a bunch of times, passing in different inputs each time and associating those inputs with the outputs and putting it all together in some sort of analysis and visualization at the end. Um, so the, the difference, because the process is so similar, the difference with Monte Carlo simulations is that we are assigning distributions, probability distributions to each of the inputs, and we're randomly drawing the values of those inputs to put into our model. Whereas with external scenario analysis, we said, what are all the inputs that make sense for this situation? We're manually picking those values. And also with sensitivity analysis, we said we want to look at, you know, investment rates between one and 5%. And so you're manually saying, well, I want to look at one, two, three, four, five percent um, But with Monte Carlo simulation, you just say, well, the interest rate is going to have a mean of three. It's going to have a standard deviation of 2% on a normal distribution. And then each time that you run the model, you don't know what interest rate is going to go into the model. It's just randomly picked from the distribution. It could be 5% this time, 1% the next time, and so on. And then what this allows you to do, which is unique to Monte Carlo simulation, is because we have probability distributions of the inputs that allows you to assign a probability distribution to the outputs as well. Um, so that's where we're going to be able to get into talking about the chance of a certain outcome occurring. Uh, you know, maybe it's a capital budgeting setting and you're looking at the, the probability that you're going to have a positive MPV, uh, or it could be a, a portfolio setting where you're saying, uh, you know, there's a 10% chance that we're going to lose as much as $300,000. Uh, there are a lot of different situations where you want to think about the probability. And Monte Carlo simulation is a nice way to be able to come to those conclusions with an otherwise deterministic model. So that's the quick intro of Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, we're going to do a different order for uh, exposing everyone to this. We're going to go next to actually running the simulation. Um, and then we're gonna come back and discuss more formally what we're doing. I think it's easiest to learn all this by example uh, because when we talk about it formally, it can sound a little bit complicated, but really it's not. Um, and just seeing it by an example really drives that home. So we'll come back next time to look at that example of running a Monte Carlo simulation. So thanks for listening and see you next time.